In this video, I'll be walking through three of Photoshop's automatic selection tools and features. I'm going to start out with the select subject feature. I have this photo of my nephew Hunter, and I'd like to select him in the photograph. The first method of accessing the select subject is to go up to the menu. Go into Select, Subject. There are no options for this. Photoshop will simply look in your photograph and look for what it thinks that subject is. I'm going to deselect this with the keyboard shortcut Command or Control D and show you a few other methods. In the toolbar, there's a tool called the Object Selection Tool. It sits alongside the Quick Selection and Magic Wand tools, so if you don't see it, then right-click one of those tools and choose the Object Selection Tool. First of all, at the very top, there's that same option you had in the menu. So if I click Select Subject, it's automatically going to find that selection in my image. I'm going to deselect that. Another method is to hover over the photo with that Object Selection Tool active, and you'll see a blue overlay appear where it thinks that subject is. If you want to select it, you simply just click the item and it will select it for you. But you can also go through and find other areas and other things in the photo, and if it highlights with blue, if you click, it's automatically going to select that area instead. Another way is to draw over the area and then let Photoshop find the subject within that space that you drew. In the options at the top, you can select from either the lasso or the rectangle. I'll stick with rectangle for now and I'll make a really quick selection. And those marching ants appeared over his head and his hand. That's what Photoshop thinks is the selection inside of that area that I drew. I'm going to deselect this, and I'm going to go ahead and do a quick edit of this so you can see one way you might want to use the Select Subject feature. I'll hover over Hunter, and I'm going to click to select him. Next, I'm going to add an adjustment layer, and I'll go ahead and add the Curves Adjustment. Because I had Hunter selected, when I added that Curves Adjustment, it automatically creates a mask from that selection. But I don't want to edit Hunter in this. Instead, what I'd like to edit is the background. Let's go ahead and preview what that mask looks like. I'm going to press and hold the Option or Alt key and click the mask thumbnail, and now I can preview it in black and white. So the white area means that anything I would do to this layer, that white area is going to be affected. Instead, what I'd like is the background to be affected, so I need to invert this so the background is the white area in my mask. I have that mask selected, so I'll use a keyboard shortcut, Command or Control I, and that inverts that selection. Next, I'll click the Curves icon to get back to that regular view. I'll go down to the Properties panel, and I'll just darken that background. If I toggle that Curves layer off and on, you can see that it's only affecting the background, which is the area that was masked in the image. Now let's jump over to another type of automatic selection. Photoshop has a really quick and easy way to select the sky in your photograph. For this photo, I'd like to make the sky a little bit darker. So I'll start out by going up to Select, Sky. Photoshop will look for that sky in your photograph and highlight it. Now I'll go over to my adjustments, add a curves adjustment, and if I press and hold the Option or Alt key and click that new mask that I just created, I can see that Photoshop did a really good job of finding that sky, and it even found some of it behind the trees. I'll click that curves icon once again to get back to that regular view, go down to the Properties panel, and I'll make a really quick edit by dragging that curve down to make that sky darker. If I toggle that top layer off and on, you can see that I was able to selectively adjust that sky to make it darker. Now lastly, I'd like to talk about the Select Focus Area. Photoshop can find those in-focus areas in your photo and automatically select them for you. One method I like to use this for is when I'm doing sharpening, because I only want to sharpen the already in-focus areas in my photograph. Before I jump into the masking, first I'm going to add my sharpening layer. I'm going to do that by duplicating my background layer with the keyboard shortcut Command or Control J. Next I'm going to go up to Filter, Other, and select High Pass. I'd like the bee's face to be what is sharpened in this photograph. So I'm going to click over that bee face, and I'll just find a spot that I think represents a really good amount of all of the detail in that bee. Next, I want to take the radius, and I'll just start it at the far left, and I just want to drag it up until I really start to see some of that detail appear. You don't want to go too intense with this. Basically, what I'm going for is just a contrasty highlight around the areas that are in focus. 
The way that sharpening works in post-processing is you're basically adding contrast to the edges of your image. So what I have here is a high pass layer with some contrast added to those edges, and then I can blend it in the layers panel to really bring out that detail. And I'll be doing that in the next step. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Next, I wanna change my blend mode of this layer down to overlay. Now overlay is a blend mode that basically takes anything that's 50% gray and makes it disappear. And because most of this layer is 50% gray, everything except those edge areas disappeared. I can zoom in and pan over. And if I toggle this layer off and on, if you watch that be in some of the other areas, it's adding contrast to those edges. So that's giving the image a sharpened look. But what I'd like to do is only apply that sharpening to the B. I don't want to apply it to the out of focus areas or it's just adding more grain to the image. If I want to make a selection of the B, first I wanna make sure that I have that B layer active. So I'll click the background layer. Next I'll go up to select focus area. Once the window pops up, you have an option to change the view. Right now it's set to overlay, but if you want to see a different view, maybe you can change it to on white. You can reveal the layer, which doesn't really show you much. You can view the marching ants and so on. I'll keep it at overlay. And the parameters here is where you set the in focus range. By default, it did a pretty good job. I'll probably end up using this setting, but you can decrease it by dragging it to the left and that will kind of shrink the focus area or you can increase the focus area by moving it to the right. And if you go too far to the right, it's just going to select a lot of the image that you don't want to see. So I'll go ahead and check auto to get back to that auto setting. And I wanna make sure that I'm outputting it to a selection. The reason I want to output it to a selection and not a layer mask is because right now I have the background layer selected and I don't want to mask the background layer. Instead, I want to mask that top sharpening layer that I just created. So I'll click okay and you can see those marching ants is where that selection has been created. I'm going to click that top layer and add a layer mask, which will pull from this selection. So if I click the layer mask icon inside of the layers panel, nothing really looked like it changed too much inside of the image, but if I press and hold that option key and then click that mask, all of those white areas in this mask are the parts that are actually showing that sharpening layer. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see that B face a little bit more. And if I toggle this layer off and on, make sure you're watching the B as I do this. It's adding sharpening to the B and even some of this flower area as well, but it's not affecting the background. So it's not sharpening the grain in my photo. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and refine this mask. So I'll press and hold the Option or Alt key and click the mask. And I'd like to remove some of these areas at the top from this mask. To do that, I'll go to my brush tool by pressing B. I wanna make sure that I'm painting with black. Right now it's set to white, so I'll press the X key, which will swap it so that black is now my painting color. Then I'll just brush over those areas at the top, and it looks like I also have a lower opacity set for my brush. So I'll go up to that opacity slider, slide it all the way to 100%, and then brush over those areas. I'm going to press and hold the Option or Alt key and click again, so now I can see my image. So by using that Select Focus Area Automatic Selection in Photoshop, it made it a lot easier to make a really nice refined selection of only those focused areas, so I could apply sharpening to only those important parts. If you'd like to learn more about layers and masking in Photoshop, be sure to check out my video course on my website at nicolezy.com.